Hi friends, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to another weekly meal prep. This week we've got a lot of fun recipes. I'm gonna be trying out some new ones and all of them are coming from Pinterest, so I'll have the links below for you. But all of these recipes are really, really simple. I'm kind of on a time crunch today and I really wanted to get this prep done and have some great meals for us, so I did everything quick and easy this week. I'm excited to share with you an app called X-Tiles that I've been using to make my meal prep and really plan everything out, including my grocery list, and I can even store recipes on there. X-Tiles is a planning tool that you could use for so many different projects and plans. I have the ability to organize and store recipes on here. I can split it up by meal type or even by protein. It just depends on how I want to organize each thing. I'm also able to add in my own recipes besides links to ones on the internet. I can put it in by category, type, and how hard or simple it is to create. I can also add other tags, like if it's gluten-free or vegan or keto, depending on how I wanna categorize it. It's very convenient to add in external links to recipes on the internet. I love the grocery shopping list feature as well. I can keep everything organized by category, so as I'm shopping through the store, it saves me so much time, and I'm also able to access this from multiple devices so I can just pull up this list from my phone. The web clipper feature allows you to install the web clipper extension that is on the X-Tiles website and then you save it to X-Tiles and then choose the destination. Once you select inbox as your destination, you can drag and drop anything from the inbox into the meal planner. Check out the website for a more detailed explanation of this feature and I just love how my template looks. I'm able to put my own flair on it and I just love how the end meal plan looks. It's easy for me to get a great overview. So now that you've seen the whole plan, you kind of know what we're gonna be working on. So I do focus on prepping my dinners because those are the meals that are always the most difficult. Everybody is in need of me usually around dinner time. So having some of it prepped for me ahead of time is super, super helpful. So we're gonna start out with Monday. We're doing a one pot meal. I'm really excited about this. I personally love one pot meals. They're so easy and they always have such great flavor. So let's go ahead and get started. I decided to use a turkey sausage for this one pot meal, but you could really use any type of sliceable sausage. So I'm just gonna slice this up and I love having everything right there on my iPad on X-Tiles app that I can just be referring to that as I'm working through my meal prep. So we're gonna put those into the frying pan and you're gonna see me use a lot of my prepped onions that I made in this past month monthly freezer meal prep. It's just so nice to have those in the freezer and I'm able to pull them out as I need them for individual recipes. And then to go along as a side with this day, we are also going to have some steamed broccoli. So I went ahead and put that into a saucepan as well. And then I'm cutting up some frozen bell pepper. I've talked about this before, but along with the frozen onions, having frozen bell peppers is so convenient and it's something that I don't have to remember every time I make a grocery list to put on my grocery list. Plus, bell peppers can sometimes be a little pricey depending on where you're buying them. So if you're able to buy them on sale and put a bunch in the freezer at once, that works out so well. So I put some of my homemade chicken broth into this recipe and some rice and then my homemade tomato paste as well. And I will leave the link for all of these recipes below. All of these, I like I said, do believe come from Pinterest. I think everything I made this week I got off of Pinterest. So you're gonna add in a few different spices and seasonings and this was so delicious and this type of meal with rice mixed in is really easy to reheat. Speaking of reheating, I do think that sometime soon I'm going to make a video creating 
created around reheating meal prepped meals because you all ask that question a lot. What is the best way to reheat these meals and what um, way makes them not soggy depending on the type of food that it is. So I think it's a subject that I'm gonna tackle sometime soon. So after I got all of the ingredients mixed in, I'm just gonna let this simmer and I actually had a big stock pot lid that does fit this cast iron skillet. So I just used that to cover it so that the rice would cook up easily. By this point, my broccoli was ready to go. So I just got that out and got it kind of cooled down to be able to store it all away. So I'm just gonna put this into my airtight containers and I have one meal down and a few more to go. These are so fast and easy. Like I said, I was really focused on everything being very, very simple this week. On Tuesday, I am making this bang bang chicken skewers with roasted asparagus and mashed potatoes. And you all, I love to let you know when we find a five star recipe in our house, this was a new one. And my husband raved and raved and raved about this chicken. It was so delicious. And he's definitely requested that I make it again soon. So let me tell you how I made it. I just cut up some chicken tenders into kind of cubes size pieces and then I made up some bang bang sauce which is really really simple it's just basically mayo some red chili sauce some sriracha and some honey and you could play with the ratios on that if your family doesn't like it very spicy you could do less sriracha if you like it more spicy you could do more sriracha or you could add even more honey if you want it to be sweeter it's really easy to modify this to your family's tastes so you're just gonna mix all of this up and then you're gonna take about half of the sauce and combine it into the chicken. And my husband was giving me a hug here if you see an extra hand. But um, it's really simple to put this into the air fryer, but we actually have a smoker that we love to smoke meat on and grill things on. So that was my choice of how to cook these up. But you could do them in the oven, you could do them in the cast iron, you could do them in the air fryer. And that honey in there just helps give it sort of a glaze type texture. It's just so, so delicious. I think this would be great even if you would add it to a stir fry. There's so much you could do with this recipe. And with them being such simple ingredients, easy to access, you don't have to go hunting too far. The red chili sauce, if you've never used that before, is generally in your like Asian food aisle in your grocery store. Um, most all grocery stores have it. The one I got, I actually picked up at Walmart. So I'm setting the smoker to preheat to 350 degrees, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put all of these chicken pieces on skewers. And since these are smaller pieces of chicken, it does cook up pretty quickly. So keep that in mind, depending on what else you're gonna prep along with this chicken. And it does reheat really well. Now to reheat these, we did reheat them in the air fryer, which worked out perfectly. They tasted like they were just coming off of the grill. It just worked out great. And putting together skewers gets me excited for summertime and grilling. That's something we like to make a lot during the summer. So along with these skewers, we're going to make some mashed potatoes. So I'm just gonna peel up a few potatoes, get them cooking in my Dutch oven. I have two Dutch ovens and I use them for so many things, but cooking up potatoes is one thing I really like them for because Dutch ovens heat very evenly and quickly and so they cook up potatoes pretty fast. So I just got those put on the stove with some water and I'm gonna let them boil up while I'm going to prepare the asparagus. Now the asparagus was something else that I could have made in the air fryer as well, but I just decided since my oven was empty, I'm gonna go ahead and spread them out on a cookie sheet since it would have probably taken two batches of putting them in the air fryer to get all of this done. So I'm just putting these out on a lined cookie sheet with parchment paper. And then I'm gonna drizzle some really good olive oil across them. And I'm going to put a little bit of salt across it as well. And I'm gonna also top it with some Parmesan. Now, I personally like to do big shavings of Parmesan with this recipe. I've made it before here on my channel. 
and I usually take my potato peeler and I just peel these big shavings off and spread them across the asparagus and then they get kind of melty into the asparagus. You could easily put pre-shredded Parmesan on this recipe as well. And then I put it in the oven, usually about 400 degrees, and I kind of keep an eye on it. Depending on how thin your asparagus shoots are is going to depend on how long you wanna bake it. So if they're a more thin asparagus shoot, then they probably won't take as long as some of the thicker pieces may take. So by this point I had put the chicken onto the smoker and the potatoes were all cooked up. I make my mashed potatoes the same way pretty much every time. If you guys have watched me do this before, then you probably know what's coming. I put some butter, some sour cream, and then that good Kinders or Kinders, however you like to say it, their buttery steakhouse seasoning is a staple in my mashed potatoes. So I shake that in and then I just use my hand masher to mash my potatoes. For years, I used to try to make them with either an immersion blender or else putting them into my mixer. And then finally, one time of oh, this past year, or it might have been the year before, I picked up a good stainless steel hand masher and it is so much easier. I can throw it in my dishwasher whenever I'm done and it doesn't make my mixer all messy. So if you don't have a good potato masher, you need to get one. I'll try to leave mine linked below. So once the chicken comes off of the grill, you're gonna take what's left or some of what's left. I actually still had sauce left even after drizzling it, but you're gonna drizzle it with that good bang bang sauce and let it sit for a little bit. You wanna let it sit for a few minutes. So just let that sauce really kind of glaze over the meat. This is just so yummy. I wish so bad that we had smell-o-vision and you could smell this meal through the screen because it definitely was our number one pick for this week. So, so delicious and so versatile as well. On Wednesday, we're going to be making a Mexican lasagna and then I will put together a tossed salad with this meal on the night that we eat it. And I will also be doing the final bake on this meal. So sometimes I create meals where they're already cooked and we just reheat them. And then other times I wait to bake that meal until the time that we're gonna eat it. It just depends on the meal. Sometimes it depends on the week and how much time I think I'll have that day to put together dinner. So this recipe and the next recipe both needed shredded cheese. So I decided to go ahead and just get this all over with by pulling out my food processor. Sometimes I hand shred, you all know that, but um, whenever it's a lot of cheese, it's really nice to get this out. So I went ahead and shredded up the Parmesan I was going to be needing for the next meal. And I also shredded up the cheese that I will be needing to make the Mexican lasagna. And then I'm just going to take and put this in to a Ziploc bag. They do a lot of additives to shredded cheese if you are unaware of that. And also personally, I think it takes away from the taste. So I like to shred my own cheese and that way I know no additives have been added in and it melts really nice this way. Sometimes I struggle with pre-shredded cheese not melting very good. I do, however, sometimes in a busy week or in a pinch purchase pre-shredded cheese, but if I can do my own, I really like doing that. So having this all done for this and also just to have in the refrigerator is really handy. So once I have the onions and the meat fried up, I'm going to add in some of the little cubes of garlic that I made in one of my recent videos. I like to make these every month or every couple of months, depending on when I run out of them. And that way I have got minced garlic ready to go in any recipe. So to this, I'm gonna add in my homemade taco seasoning blend and some water. Now I'm kind of over seasoning this because we're gonna add some more things to this pan. So the seasoning isn't just for the meat, but we're also gonna add in some black beans that have been rinsed and some green chilies with their sauce or their juice as well. And then I'm going to add in a jar of my homemade 
diced tomatoes that I made this past year. These were kind of bigger dices. I should have grabbed a jar that had some smaller dices, but it all worked out. It's all still delicious. And you're gonna leave some of the liquid in those tomatoes as well so that everything is nice and moist and not too dried out. So now you're gonna take a nine by 13 and I put some oil in the bottom of there. And then I just took one of the corn tortillas and spread this around. So again, as most of my recipes are, this would be gluten free as well as long as you get corn tortillas that say that they're gluten free and then you're gonna kind of layer this together just like lasagna you're gonna put a layer of the tortillas and then you're going to add in the meat mixture in between along with some shredded cheese and I like to go wild with the cheese we love cheese in our house and it just makes everything so delicious so this here, once you have it all assembled, you can put it in the refrigerator and then you can bake it whenever you're ready to eat it. And then on top of that, we will top it off with some sour cream, maybe some extra salsa, kind of other toppings that you would put on tacos or something like that. You may wanna have those on hand, hot sauce. I have home canned jalapenos. Those are the type of things that I will serve along with this, along with the tossed salad that I mentioned earlier. Touch from the warm wind blowing is Thursday, we're gonna prep a Parmesan crusted sheet pan and it's going to have green beans and potatoes on it. I love, 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 love sheet pan meals. In fact, we are kind of a family that doesn't have very many crock pot meals. Um, that we enjoy, but we do really enjoy sheet pan meals. It always gives that good roasted flavor. I feel like the flavors cooking together in the oven make such a good end result. So here I'm just cutting up some red potatoes with the skin on. I put in this bag some olive oil, and then as you saw, I thawed out some of my little garlic cubes that I've made. And I'm just gonna toss that all together with a little bit of Parmesan, and then I'm gonna spread that out on one third of the cookie sheet. Next, I'm going to do the same process with some fresh green beans. Now, I may get some questions on if you could do this with frozen green beans, and you probably will end up with very mushy green beans if you use frozen ones. So, preferably fresh, but you could give frozen a try. And I'm just going to, again, use the bag to make sure that my veggies are coated really well. I like to do this so then they tend to roast a little bit more evenly and better if it's really coated and I can kind of massage the oil into the veggies. So you're gonna dump this on the other end of the pan, kind of, again, leaving about two thirds to one third of the pan. And then you're going to take and make this crunch that goes on top of the chicken. So you can use regular breadcrumbs. We really like these pork and it's spelled with a Q at the end. Breadcrumbs are basically pork rinds that have been seasoned and blended up. Sometimes I make my own of this, but there is a brand. This one in particular has an Italian seasoning in it so that just added to the flavor of this i'm adding in some garlic some salt some pepper and then to bind it all together i'm going to add in some olive oil and then you're just going to stir that up and i'm going to put the chicken breasts on the pan and i'm going to pack everything across the top of the chicken breasts
as you're gonna see this coming out of the oven this makes such a great yummy crunch on top of that chicken and look how fast we were able to put that meal together so now for Friday and if you're unfamiliar I just prep the days of the week because I really don't want to store food longer than that in my refrigerator and a lot of times on the weekend we end up cooking together as a family my husband really enjoys cooking too so we just kind of leave the weekends for that so we're going to go ahead on Friday and make stuffed peppers and then we're also going to make a side of brussels sprouts so this is a really really easy stuffed pepper recipe again i'm pulling out some of my frozen onions they're so helpful i don't have to get out a cutting board and make a mess cutting up an onion or cry <laughs> cutting up an onion here i'm gonna take these bell peppers and I'm just going to core them. So I'm just going to cut through the top and core them and pull that core out, just leaving space. So I started out in this nine by 13 and then I realized that with six peppers, they were getting a bit wobbly and were not standing up very nice for me. So I pulled out a different baking dish I had to kind of wedge them into the baking dish and so that they would stand up for me so I could fill them up a little bit nicer. And then I'm not gonna let that nine by 13 go to waste. I'm actually going to use that for my Brussels sprouts since that's already been oiled and ready to go. So all I'm gonna do is shove my peppers into the pan that they fit better into. So to create that filling, we're gonna go ahead and just fry up that pound of burger with the onions. I'm gonna add a few other things, but while that's frying, I'm going to prepare my Brussels sprouts. Now this is really simple. I'm just cutting them either in half or in fourths, and I'm putting them into this nine by 13. Now I am gonna wait to bake this until I bake the stuffed peppers all together on Friday. So I'm just gonna get everything prepped and I'm not gonna pre-cook any of this. So after I've cut up the Brussels sprouts, I'm going to go ahead and drizzle them again with this really good olive oil. And then I'm going to add my seasoning on top of that. And then all I'm gonna do is put the lid on that and put it in the refrigerator and it'll be ready to go whenever I'm ready to roast them in the oven. Heading back to our filling for the stuffed peppers, I'm going to add some rice to this as well. And there is a little bit of a variation here. So I think that there is some tomato paste and some seasonings in the original recipe, but I just went ahead and added in a small jar of my homemade marinara sauce. And I also added some diced tomatoes and just kind of made my own seasoning sauce concoction for this recipe. I decided that I need to use up more of my marinara I made this past year, and this was a great recipe to squeeze it into. So after the stuffing had simmered for a little while, I stuffed the inside of the peppers, and I just really divided the stuffing out evenly between these peppers. And personally, I don't like green peppers for doing stuffed peppers. I like yellow and red and orange, so I didn't purchase green, but if you enjoy a good green bell pepper that's another option you could do green instead of these colors to keep the bell peppers from falling around i just grabbed this little oven safe dish and kind of wedged it in here so that everything is going to stay nice and standing upright in the oven. Next, I'm gonna take some of that cheese that I shredded up and really pack it into the top of the bell pepper so that it's nice and cheesy and bubbly when it comes out of the oven. To store this, I'm just going to cover it with some press and seal and put it into the refrigerator. So thank you all so much for watching. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe, chat with me in the comments. Let me know what you're making this week. I love getting inspiration even from you all. And don't forget to give this video a like and I'll see you in my next one.